So for this clip, we'll be discussing uh, again the concept of interest parity, but now in a graph. So we're going to develop a, a graph that uh, allows us to uh, understand and analyze uh, issues in the foreign exchange market in some more detail. We'll do that in three steps. First, uh, develop a quick uh, statement of UIP, the uncovered interest parity. Okay. And second, uh, develop the graph itself. And third, importantly, uh, consider how equilibrium in the foreign exchange market is attained. So, uh, We'll clear the page here and begin with that quick statement of UIP. So uh, the interest parity condition um, implies that uh, the rate of return on a financial investment in one country here, the US, in equilibrium in the foreign exchange market must be equal to the sum of uh, the rate of return on a comparable asset in uh, the foreign country here, the EU, uh, plus uh, the expected depreciation. So let's just note this here. E hat ET is uh, the expected rate of depreciation of the dollar of the dollar against the euro at time t and until uh, time t plus one so e hat et denotes a proportional growth rate and uh, the higher et the more depreciated is the US dollar. So E hat ET is E T plus one minus ET divided by ET. So uh, where ET itself is the exchange rate today and E T plus one E is our expectation of market expectation of what the exchange rate will be one period hence at the end of this period so that said uh, we have here uh, very simply uh, the dollar return on the investment in the US uh, let me write it like that dollar return in the US and on the right hand side we have the dollar return uh, in the EU so the uh, the sum of the interest rate in Europe plus the expected depreciation uh, is the expected dollar return uh, on the euro investment so uh, quickly the restatement here what if this interest rate is larger than the sum of these two terms? Well, then uh, there will be an outflow of funds from Europe to the US, which implies that uh, the exchange rate today, this one here, uh, falls. So ET today falls as people are f uh, as the funds are flowing into dollars, and people are investing in the asset that pays the higher rate of return. And as that interest rate today, uh, sorry, as that exchange rate today falls, the expected depreciation rises since uh, our expectation has not changed. Uh, so this is the crucial piece here that we have static expectations and against that expectation a lower exchange rate today implies a higher future exchange, uh, uh, a higher future depreciation which will lead to 
equality right here. So uh, beginning with that, let's again clear the page and uh, do the graph. So uh, one, we have our US on the left hand side. Uh, we are going to use this graph ultimately to determine well what the exchange rate is today between dollars and euros so we're gonna have our graph uh, in with the exchange rate on this axis here and uh, on this axis we have the dollar return on the US asset well in this in this diagram what is uh, what is this? This is of course just a straight line. We have here our US. The interest rate in the US is independent of the exchange rate in the sense that the interest rate is determined in domestic financial markets uh, uh, where the interest rate ultimately is determined by the monetary authorities, the Federal Reserve Bank, and, uh, and so that we have a uh, vertical line here. Now second, we get REU plus E hat ET and we're going to draw that in the same space with ET on the vertical axis and the dollar return on the EU asset on this as uh, on this axis now in what sense does this sum depend on the exchange rate so that's the question uh, let's write this out here so this is REU plus ET plus 1 minus ET over ET so as ET varies how does our return our dollar return on the EU asset vary given that we assume a fixed interest rate and a fixed expectation. Well, it's easy to see that uh, the lower the exchange rate, the higher must be the dollar return on the EU asset uh, for the reasons outlined before that, uh, yeah, crucially rests on the assumption of the fixed expectation since a more appreciated uh, dollar exchange rate today implies higher future depreciation so uh, on a point like this with a fairly appreciated dollar uh, the future depreciation implies a higher return here with a fairly depreciated dollar exchange rate you um, you get no comp no additional compensation from future depreciation so that the dollar return uh, on the EU asset is lower okay so we have these two curves and obviously uh, we can uh, we can uh, combine the two to get our uh, equilibrium graph or um, draw this a little larger so we have ET on this axis and the dollar return on both assets here and we have RUS independent of the exchange rate and the expected return on the euro asset uh, in this curve E hat ET so there we have a point that uh, suspiciously looks like uh, what we might call an equilibrium and uh, indeed that is the equilibrium that is where the foreign exchange market is in equilibrium which determines which determines our ET star which determines the exchange rate so the whole exercise to consider the no arbitrage condition and UIP ultimately gives us the exchange rate determination of uh, the exchange rate now 
No. And um, let's just uh, make this perfectly clear here. That happens uh, in combination with three exogenous variables, which is the interest rate in the U.S. determined in U.S. Uh, financial markets. Uh, primarily by the federal interaction between the Federal Reserve and domestic financial market participants, the same for the ECB in Europe, and three are uh, level of the exchange rate uh, expected um, at the end of the period, E, e T plus one. Now, uh, in this graph, um, what would happen if we were in this equilibrium? So let's assume that uh, the exchange rate is actually here. What would happen? Well, the U.S. return is uh, this high. Uh, so this is our U.S. Whereas the uh, euro return is only this high. This or this is the dollar return on the euro asset. Well, let me not scribble down all those things down here. Obviously, the dollar return is higher than the euro return, which means that we're going to have an inflow of funds into uh, U.S. Uh, currency. Uh, Europeans are going to begin to buy dollars in order to invest into the U.S. asset. And that means that we're getting an appreciation of the exchange rate today. So, uh, from ET... Uh, from this level ET bar the exchange rate falls to ET star uh, so that uh, we're essentially moving to this point until we are in equilibrium where the two returns are equal and there are no further arbitrage opportunities now uh, let me click back a little bit here and clean up the diagram and then just add one consideration, one example. We can uh, think of uh, an example where we add where we add um, where we now increase the the interest rate in the U.S. so that we're considering a change in one of the exogenous variables. So let's assume that the interest rate, ah, uh, that's a very cranky line. So let's try to get this a little straighter. Does work, does matter. So we're increasing the US interest rate. That happens in uh, domestic financial markets. So let's, let's not be concerned right now, right about right now how that happens, but you see that this change implies a new intersection of these two here. How is this new equilibrium attained? So how do we get from uh, the first equilibrium to the second equilibrium? Which we might call ET star uh, 2. Obviously, when the uh, US interest rate rises, when the US interest rate is raised by US monetary authorities, uh, again, the U.S. return, the dollar return on the U.S. investment is larger than the sum of the uh, return on the on the euro bond plus the expected depreciation, which means that uh, there will be outflows of funds from Europe into dollars in order to buy that asset, which implies this this appreciation. Uh, and that again implies higher uh, expected depreciation which runs up uh, against the fixed expected level uh, one period hence. So that is what uh, in a very simple model uh, determines the exchange rate.